How's it going everyone? This is going to be a response to Cordy F. Shag, who is a Muslim and he seems to have many misconceptions about atheism. Um, I've attempted to open dialogue with him several times in numerous videos, but he just refuses to respond to me in general. And since I've noticed that he openly allows video responses, I figured I'd give this a shot. I'm also going to help him along with his presentation style because it makes a little bit more sense than the way he's doing it on his own. So uh, here we go. If evolution is true, then why are flowers beautiful? Flowers are just random. <laughs> nice straw man argument right out of the gate. First, an educated atheist would never say anything so stupid. And even if they did, it's not because they're an atheist, it's because they're uneducated. Flowers are not random at all. They get their distinct pattern from their DNA. So how are they random? <laughs> they are also utilized exclusively re for reproduction. They are literally the genitalia of the host plant. As to what makes them beautiful to us, well, that's a bit more complex. Actually, no, flowers follow a distinct pattern. And randomness isn't beautiful anyways. Randomness appears to be messy, and messy is not beautiful. It's funny you say that because the most expensive painting ever sold happens to be an abstract painting, um, which is basically random art. Now, if you want to look at this and tell me it's not beautiful, I can fully understand that. Uh, taste in art is, is very similar to taste in food, you know, to each their own. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and so on and so forth. But the point I'm making here is that random can be beautiful, it just may not be beautiful to you. Okay, think about it. Evolution is only concerned about function. Therefore, if evolution is true, there's no such thing as beauty. Clearly, you've never heard of sexual selection. If you're stuck on an island with one other female and four other supermodel male studs, chances are your genetic lineage is toast. You should easily understand that if you're not sexually competitive, you will have a much more difficult time trying to reproduce. This is a big reason why you shave your face, you keep your hair cut nicely, and hopefully you shower regularly. The same applies in nature, and that's precisely how imperfections in the genetic pool are normally weeded out. Certainly, you've heard about the mating processes of many different types of animals, which are heavily dependent on direct sexual competitiveness. May it be uh, running faster, flying higher, having brighter colors, or doing a better dance. Whatever the criteria may be, this is essentially sexual selection and is why beauty does in fact play a very critical role in nature. And this applies to all animals, not just humans. Okay, well I think I understand what you're saying now. The fact that we have beauty is proof that God exists. Because if God doesn't exist, that means everything is only here for a function, to serve a purpose. And beauty doesn't serve a purpose in nature. And this is exactly why I hate religion. Look what it's done to your brain. I'm going to play that clip one more time for you. And I want you to listen to it yourself real freaking close. And just tell me, does this make a damn bit of sense at all? The fact that we have beauty is proof that God exists. And beauty doesn't serve a purpose in nature. That logic is not even on par with a retard. I don't know a more gentle way to put it to you. Um, obviously, the logic engine in your brain, it's not quite functioning correctly, so I highly advise you take it to a mechanic and have it looked at. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. Cheer up, man, what are you doing? Turn to Abel's boy. I'm saying. All right, just, all right, enough of that, enough. Exactly, beauty doesn't do anything. So the beautiful flowers that you see in the forests and the sky and everything beautiful in this universe has been created for our appreciation. Because beauty doesn't serve any rational function. The fact that we have beauty is 100% proof that we have a god. Actually, this video is nothing more than further evidence proving that religious dogma perpetuates ignorance and gives people a false sense of superiority. But worst of all, it literally kills a person's natural curiosity. The corruption of your desire to learn will never benefit you, and it's clear that you do not care to learn because I would think that if you're going to make a video proposing an argument from God that completely hinges on your understanding of beauty, that you might have spent five minutes to educate yourself on what beauty is and our understanding of why we think things are beautiful. That way you could verify the validity of your own argument so to save yourself some time and embarrassment of having other people do it for you.
Uh, maybe this is just too complex. Maybe this is just crazy talk. I don't know. You know, it's amazing. Atheists can never answer my questions. Anytime I ask them a question, the only thing they do is insult me. I'm more than happy to answer any question you might have, and so are hundreds of other atheists here. Your videos are almost all aggressive and provocative anti-atheist, anti-evolution videos, so how could you possibly be surprised at the nature of the comments you receive here on YouTube of all places? On top of that, you also ignore any civil attempts to discuss your videos in your own comment section, so what do you expect? You're not here looking for answers, you're simply here to preach, and people recognize that. By default, people are given respect until they're presented compelling reason not to. But it seems like you go out of your way to provide these very reasons for people to dislike you. You plug your ears and you scream la la la, and this mentality is exactly what's gotten your mind so scrambled up. I have no problem making a video answering each of your questions, except I'm afraid it'll be a waste of time. If you're honestly still wanting those questions answered, I'll gladly spend the time, but I'm only going to do so if you give me the assurance that you will actually watch it with an open mind and with a half-assed intention of learning. But just back to this mentality real quick, the only way you're ever going to unscramble your mind is by discussing these things with people. You gotta take the time to educate yourself. My Skype information is right on my channel page, so feel free to hit me up and give me a call. So Cordy, at this point, as far as I can see it, you have two morally acceptable options to remedy your little video error here. You can take the pansy route and just remove your video altogether, or you can be a humble man about it and do a new video acknowledging your error and correcting your misunderstanding regarding the important role beauty plays in nature. But that's it for me in this video everybody. Um, I'm finally back from my two week suspension. Uh, my Draw Muhammad Day video got flagged for violence even though it was a toned down video and everything. I uh, but I just want to give everybody a heads up, Truth Surge and I, we've been working on this absolutely epic rap video for the last week or two, and uh, anybody who is participating in this, and if you haven't seen in your footage yet, please go ahead and do so. Um, we're not in any real rush or anything, but of course the sooner we can get this done the better, and you know, we'd like to get this up in the next couple days if possible. Um, but that really does it for me everybody, um, I hope you all have a great safe weekend. It's amazing how so many atheists are out of touch with reality. So many of them like to put on this fake image that they're intelligent and civilized. But in reality, their arrogance is transparent. 